Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Jonathan Hui Hui. I'm from Oak Ridge National Laboratory, uh, where I work. Uh, I wear many hats, but today I wear the hat of a software engineer. Um, and today I'm going to be talking about my work mapping regu regulatory attributes to OSM. Um, thank you all for being here, and thank you to the organizing committee for letting me share my work with you all. All right. So to kind of go over what I'm going to go over. Um, first, I'm going to uh, talk about the risk-based routing uh, application that we're working on. Um, it's risk-based routing for routing hazardous material shipments across the United States, um, and we do that in our application Secure Route. Uh, nec oops. Next, I will go over why exactly we decided to use OSM for this purpose. Um, then I'm going to talk about some challenges that I ran into conflating uh, between an in-house network and the OSM itself. Um, and then I'm going to go over a little bit of a technical dive into mapping the regulatory attributes uh, from a low density to a high density uh, road network. Um, then I'm going to show a proof of concept and briefly go over what's coming next. Right, so for risk-based routing, uh, the the big thing you need is information. Um, and the goal here is to minimize the risk that is posed to the shipment. And this is like a risk for like hazardous materials getting shipped across the United States. And like the things, the ri type of risks you might run into is something like a terrorist trying to hijack that truck and gain those shipments and use it against the United States. Um, simple tools like Google Maps, they're great. And I'm sorry if that's like a faux pas at OSM for including a screenshot of Google Maps, um, but it was quick and easy. Um, those are great for getting like the quickest route, you know, from ORNL to Salt Lake City, um, but they don't tell the whole story. Um, and we need to understand the risks, you know, different routing options that we have, and then any regulatory attributes that we might care about. And also, you know, can we compare routes, which ones are more risky than the other. Right, so it kind of segues a little bit what I touched on in the previous slide, that these government regulations kind of limit the potential route that a specific payload can take. Um, so we need this information in order to make the correct choices of what route we want to take. And then I, you know, some uh, signs that we see along the highway, you know, we can only use certain highways for a hazmat carrier or you know you don't want to take hazardous materials through a tunnel, um, pretty logical, but that information is important for route planning. Um, so what Secure Route does is we use risk attributes um, along the route to determine the risk of that route. And so I've included a screenshot um, from our application, um, kind of detailing the route that I had on Google Maps uh, from ORNL to Salt Lake City. Um, you can see very clearly, you know, there's color coded along the way. Uh, green meaning like low risk, yellow and orange is moderate risk, and then red would be like, don't take this, <laughs> find a new route. Um, and those risk levels are determined by the type of risk attributes that are on that route. So if there's like a bridge with low clearance, like in that particular red spot that, you know, you don't want to take, like that's, that's why it shows up red. And that kind of segues into one of the nice features of Secure Route is you can specify like which attributes you care about. Like, do you care about those bridges? And if you care about those low hanging bridges, then it will flag it in that specific color. And then also something nice about Secure Route is we spent a lot of time and effort and taxpayer money on uh, soliciting experts in the field for their expert opinion. And we offer default values for these uh, routes based upon their opinion. So this kind of got off track of where, like I started, you know, where's government regulations fit into all this? Where does OSM fit in? And I'm going to start addressing that. So also previously, or I want to mention that this all previously has been done on an in-house routing network and we're moving to OSM. Right. So and that's kind of captured here in this slide. Um, I included a screenshot of the routing network that we were using. Um, it's called Trajus, uh, the pros of it is we care, or it has all the major highways in the United States, um, which is pretty important, gets you from you know, Seattle to Miami. Um, 
and for in terms of like generating route it's really fast because it is so simple so you can generate a route in an order of milliseconds to get across the country whereas like if you use something like google maps it's like 10 to 12 seconds so that's that's great but it also comes with a lot of cons and a lot of things that osm can address so i included the snapshot of denver um, and the orange lines are the Trajus network that we use um, in-house. And then the blue lines there are just kind of the incredible increase in node density that we get from OSM. So clearly, you know, there's way better node density. You have way more detail of routing that you're able to achieve and spatial accuracy. And then I just wanted to kind of include an anecdotal piece. Um, on the left there, uh, it's a route from the town where I live up in Buffalo, New York. Um, I'm lucky to work remotely. Um, and I was like, what happens if I try to route myself on our application to a conference that we have this summer? And so on the left, you can see the, the yellow line doesn't really capture the route well, which is unfortunate. And But then, you know, as soon as we move to OSM on the right here, um, the route shown in blue um, captures perfectly. Like it gets you downtown and it works very well. Um, right, so some of the challenges of using OSM, um, and we're using it locally, one of the challenges is that it's a very large data set to ingest. Um, it's large, cumbersome, difficult to deal with, and we actually had to like refactor our entire risk algorithm and the way we handle routing. Um, so there were some issues of scale there, but we, we persevered and or achieved, achieved our goal. Um, and then also just mapping our existing attributes isn't as simple like ST intersect, um, which that's a spatial function available in PostGIS. And then also how do you ensure accuracy with are you when you're mapping between our in-house network and this OSM? Right. So here's kind of how we we handled like loading OSM into the PostGIS implementation. Um, I'm not sure how familiar all of you are with this technical aspect, but um, start from downloading it in GeoFabric, um, and then you can unpack the the PBF using a tool called OSM Convert. Um, I filter out non-roads beforehand. I'm sorry, trail people, but I don't use trails. <laughs> um, and then uh, this this tool, OSM 2PO, was really hard to find, but it is an incredibly infish, incredibly efficient at ingesting the large data set into a Postgres database. So it'll spit out a PG routing capable um, network, and PG routing is a tool that we use to route on the network, um, into a psql file that's just ingested directly into our database. Um, I tried other tools like OSM2 psql or OSM2 PG routing. I don't know if it was my local implementation or if I wasn't using them correctly, but they couldn't handle the United States file. Right. So before we get into like some nitty gritty details, I just wanted to go over like um, some basic uh, nodes and edges and what I'm gonna be talking about for the next couple of minutes. Um, so what are nodes and edges if, if you're not familiar? So edges are these blue lines on the graph and that you can generally think of them as a road um, and then the nodes um, are the points where those edges meet. And you can think of them as like maybe an intersection, a turn, or a, like a interchange, as you can see over there. Um, and edges connect nodes between each other. And so in order to route on a network, an edge needs a source node and an edge needs a t target node. So if you're routing along a network, you're subsequently going from source to target, and this becomes a new source to a new target and so on and so forth till you reach your destination. Anyways, so the first step that I took to get the attributes that we care about from our in-house network to OSM is I needed to create this aggregated list of all the nodes in OSM. And so these are just some SQL uh, queries that I used. Um, first, just because of the way that OSM 2PO ingests things, um, I added point columns that were converted from text because they were stored as text, um, and then just created an index on them. Right, so we have this 
list of nodes and then just filter out simply um, things to be unique. Um, so we create this aggregated list of unique nodes and all the possible nodes within the OSM network. And this, this is important. So then, then the goal is to match the, the location and the ID of that node to an edge from our existing in-house network. So you find the node and you match it to an edge of the old network, and then you're, you're grabbing that attribute from the, old, uh, from the old network. So what you're doing here is you're taking the road geometry and then the node's geometry, and then you're just using some cutoff distance and you're matching it you know, one to one saying that all of these nodes match up with these edges from our old network. So then we get um, the attributes from our old uh, old network. So then, then we're not done. Then what we need to do is we then need to join that list of nodes back onto an OSM edge, and that's pretty easy. Um, so that's that's done here by making sure that we have the same IDs as like the node um, coming from the uh, the list of nodes that match to the uh, old edges. And what we're left with is a list of OSM nodes, their corresponding edges, and the attributes associated with it. And then finally, in this query, I uh, just throw out some road types that weren't um, classified by our network. Right. So then, then I do some filtering steps um, where I uh, found all the nodes in this, this new table that I've created where we have um, the attributes assigned to the edges and then we have the node IDs. And I make sure that both the source and the target ID are in that list. And what that, that's doing is making sure that we're filtering out things like, you know, things that kind of jut off that we don't want to include in our list. And then simply just match all the conflated edge IDs back to OpenStreetMap, or the, the local OpenStreetMap. Um, there might be a more efficient way to do this, and I've seen a lot of implementations uh, and discussions about people having programs to do this already, but you know, this is, um, this is how we're, we're doing it to modify our local instance of OSM um, and not like upload this to, to the master list. Um, and so, but also these queries, these ran on the order of minutes, so I didn't really spend too much time optimizing the workflow either. Anyway, so proof, proof of concept, a little visual verification. Um, I have our in-house network um, in orange matched up with the resulting OpenStreetMap classification. Um, and this is for um, things like, uh, I think I use the HRCQ attribute, which is hazmat a restricted controlled quantity attribute. And we see that we select out, um, this This actually would have been a, a, a highway that's included on Trajus, but not on OSM. And we select out all the highways successfully that we don't wanna see. Um, and then if you zoom in on something like uh, on, -rams, on ramps, off ramps, and like an interchange, um, it kind of highlights some of the challenges you might run into with, with something like this. like. Our, our in-house network is, it's a single line. Um, and sometimes the interstate, you know, there's a wide bend on it. Sometimes there's, there's you know, a little bit of a buffer that you need to consider and that can be challenging. And then also, you know, you, you need to capture the on-ramps and off-ramps because those are important as well. So, uh, so future work, um, one of the things that, I mean, we're currently using this to, to route, but you know, we can do some more rigorous verification of the integrity of the routing network. Um, we can improve our in-house routing algorithms to maybe run a little bit faster. Uh, we can improve our risk assignment algorithms. Um, and I'd just like to say thank you to the Secure Route team um, for all their help and support. And thank you for your attention. If you have questions, I'll take them, or you can email me at ornl.gov. Thank you.
Yeah, so we, we, ha we take the attributes from our in-house network and we map them to OSM. Like I know OSM does have those attributes and like I said, like hazmat is one of the attributes that we take over. Like that's, that's kind of like a sponsor requirement but also there are other attributes that weren't included on OSM. Hazmat's just the easiest one to talk about. Uh, we we currently don't. I'm the only one on this, and that that's cycles that I just don't have. Um, in terms of like vandalism, we we've downloaded it once, and that's kind of like the master copy we're working off of. We don't like routinely update the OSM network that we're using. <laughs> 